Welcome everybody. My name is Marvin Belog. I'm a CFE, a certified fraud examiner and forensic accountant. Uh, hopefully this is one of many videos, but I just want to go through a quick introduction to a new fraud alert. A former MoviePass executive was arrested on indictment alleging he embezzled $260,000 from employer to repay Coachella debt. Now, let's go through the beginning and then I'll show you exactly how we depict this fraud or this alleged fraud has occurred, right? A former executive at cinema subscription service MoviePass Inc. has been arrested on federal grand jury indictment alleging he embezzled approximately $260,000 from MoviePass parent company to repay money he borrowed to produce an event at Coachella. So, initial thoughts is that he is a former executive at a cinema sus subscription service MoviePass. So as a former executive, some of the employees may already know him, may already trust him, all right? And they're aware that he went off on his own, okay? So Khalid Itum of Hollywood was arrested by special agent on this past Tuesday. Itum is charged with two counts of wire fraud and two counts of money laundering. Now, let's just read, let's just skip ahead and read how he committed this fraud. Okay, so let's see here. It says, Itum borrowed money. We're going to read this section here, and then I'll show you how it actually happened, or allegedly happened. Itum borrowed money from two individuals to help fund Kaleidoscope's costs at Coachella. To repay the borrowed money, Itum later allegedly submitted sham invoices to HMNY for services purportedly rendered by Kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope is the entity that he owned and a different company owned by an Etum associate. Etum allegedly caused HMNY employees to wire money, which is the wire fraud, if the invoices were shams, from MoviePass and HMNY accounts to a Kaleidoscope bank account to pay the sham invoices. Right. Etum allegedly concealed his scheme by lying to HMNY auditors that Kaleidoscope had been used to pay legitimate MoviePass expenses from 2018 Coachella Festival. Right. So it seems like the auditors attempted to prove uh, services were rendered. He had lied to them saying that they did provide services when asking, most likely when asking internally, they said, no, we never received those uh, services by Kaleidoscope. So then an investigation ensued. OK, two hundred sixty thousand dollars is quite a sum of money. Um, and I would hope that there is investigation of uh, transactions that high. Right. But before we before I show you another screen, let's just show let me just show you that fraud never is never the answer. If convicted of all charges, Itum would face a statutory maximum sentence of twenty years, right? Per per wire fraud. Okay? So that's forty years he's facing just with wire fraud alone. And up to ten years of federal prison for each money laundering count. That's another twenty years. It's two counts of each. He's facing up to 60 years maximum. And remember, he's already 42 years old. So if anything, he'll be 102 if he's able to live that long in federal prison and on that food. Okay. Nonetheless, here's how it looks in a graph. Okay. So let me move over to a different page here. So when I read this, I wanted to show everybody here how this happens. And what I like to do is I like to look at things through illustration, right? So the way I see this is that it happened in several stages. Here you have, in this red triangle, here you have Itum and Kaleidoscope, the entity that he owned and created, okay? He borrows money from lender one and lender two. So that is identified as these two beautiful dotted lines. So the funds travel over here to Itum and Kaleidoscope. And he throws the event in 2018. Great. He's left with two debts, two pieces of debt, lender one and lender two. So what does he do? As the report indicates, he submits false, uh, allegedly submits false kaleidoscope invoices to HMNY and MoviePass. Okay. This causes HMNY to tell its employees to wire those funds here in red to Etoon and Kaleidoscope. And in turn, he ends up paying back the two lenders. So stage one, 
right, is the borrowing of the funds. Stage two was submitting the false invoices. Okay, stage two was throwing the event. Stage three was submitting the false invoices, right? And then stage four was receiving the funds and sending them back to the lender. Okay, we don't necessarily know if he actually repaid the lenders. He could have even pocketed that, inf that money. We don't know because the report doesn't say. I would assume it could go either way, you know, without, without any detail. Um, most, I would say with my experience, it's, it's a good 50, 50 that, uh, you know, he could have pocketed some of the money. Okay. And paid them back some of it, you know, or settled his debts. Nonetheless, this is how it happens, guys. You know, uh, there's a lack of oversight, a lack of verification, uh, you know, you're trusting people, uh, former executives especially, um, you know, there's going to be a lack of oversight um, and acceptance. Um, deceit is always uh, a variable. So, you know, with the proper internal controls, you could certainly deter or mitigate the risk of fraud. But, you know, fraudsters will always find a way. So I hope this helps you visualize the article. I love these visuals. Uh, they allow you to understand how it occurs. Um, and where to necessarily place proper internal controls, right? When when these kaleidoscope invoices were submitted, you know, I'm assuming they were submitted for very large amounts, okay? And now HMNY MoviePass probably does do business at very, you know, at a large scale, um, you know, looking at large sums, but there has to be an oversight, a verification process for Invoices greater than 10,000. Who's paying them and who authorized them in HM, HMNY and MoviePass? So that's another question. Who authorized these payments? Right? And without the proper oversight, what? well, how did it break down? Was it purely because he was a former executive and they trusted him? So, you know, these are just questions you have to answer when you're looking at fraud. But anyway, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully this is one of many. Hope you hopefully you learned something from this graph here. Um, but you know, let me know. Leave some comments, and then uh, I'll report more each week as, uh, as as time goes by. There's always fraud, and there's you know it's always going to happen. So plenty to report on, guys. All right, enjoy, and thank you, and take care. Bye bye. And remember, the numbers don't lie; people do.